Hello and thank you for tuning in. I'm Ruth Henderson. Please let's have a word of prayer. Thank you most loving and kind Heavenly Father for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for letting me share my testimony Lord and I pray that my testimony will lead to many people being free of depression, fear, guilt, emotional issues. Please may this message be a blessing. Put your words in my mouth, Lord. Please speak through me. In the worthy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. Over the years, for the past 20 years, I have worked as a literature evangelist. A literature evangelist is a person who shares the gospel by giving out Christian literature. I have also worked sometimes as a Bible worker. I have been a Christian counselor and have counseled people on health. I have hosted health seminars, seminars teaching on how to have victory over sin, Bible prophecy, righteousness by faith. And also I've hosted some poetry concerts. But today, I'm going to be talking about, my message is entitled, Stop Depression, Fear, Guilt, and Emotional Issues Now, and How to Control Your Thoughts. After the message, please stay tuned for the free book, free CD, and free DVD offer that I'll be offering after this message. Over the years, I've met many people dealing with spiritual warfare and they make the mistake of running to a doctor getting a prescription but we need to know what our spiritual weapons are many people are dealing with fear depression emotional issues there's a battle going on for the mind God wants control of our minds in order to give us peace of mind courage, hope. The devil wants control of our mind to bring fear, doubt, discouragement, guilt. And uh, this battle for the mind is just as real as any physical war or battle that has ever been fought. But it's up to us who we give our minds to. I used to suffer from fear, depression, and um, feelings of guilt, emotional issues, but today I want to share my testimony about how God delivered me because I truly believe that based on the majority of the people that I met who are dealing with these issues, their problem didn't stem from a physical problem. So medication didn't work. Actually medication and drugs, they don't cure. They're pretty much a band-aid. They may help but they don't cure. Counseling helped me, but it didn't cure me. It just uh, helped, but ultimately what cured me was my establishing a relationship with God. God is the ultimate healer. He can heal any physical or emotional problem. And so I found that uh, most of the people that I met in my health seminars and counseling and teaching people who were dealing with these things, their problem didn't still stem from a physical problem uh, or a mental problem. It mostly came from a spiritual. Something was missing spiritually. And um, in my book, I have written 10 books and I have six of my books here. And uh, this is one of my books. Um, I have upgraded it. It used to be called 50 Ways That I Know to Overcome Depression, Fear, and Guilt. But the new version is entitled The Way to Be Happy, 45 Key Ways That I Know to Overcome Depression, Fear, and Guilt. And in this book, I go into great detail about what you can do to overcome the spirit of fear. What you can do to overcome depression, guilt, uh, many ways that you can control your thoughts. A lot of people are having trouble controlling their thoughts and how to overcome negative thinking, how to overcome a, even a quick temper. 
and um, it also covers how to understand how to have the new birth experience and overcome sin in your life and um, but tonight now in my book I I offer physical things you can do mental things you can do to overcome but and I'm going to touch on a few of these physical things right here, but mostly in this message, I'm going to talk about the spiritual things you can do to have the victory. Because I truly believe the many people who are dealing with these issues, something spiritually is missing. And when they get make that spiritual connection with God, He will be able to heal them and deliver them from their fear and depression and emotional issues. The physical things that I cover in my book and address, I teach how to train you to talk positive. A lot of people are dealing with fear and emotional issues because they talk negative. Some people I've heard curse themselves. But in this book, I go into detail and I address how to train yourself to talk positive about your life. How to talk faith, talk hope. How to let go of the past. In the Holy Bible, in Philippians 3.14, Apostle Paul says, Forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward. Uh, I press forward to the mark of the high calling. And so, we need to learn to let go. Some people don't know how to let go of the past. They have experienced uh, traumatic things that have happened in their lives and they're still dwelling on things that have happened 10, 15, 20 years. And so in my book, I address things that you can do to let go of the past. Forget those things. When those past negative thoughts, those past negative experiences come to your mind, say out loud to yourself, Philippians 14, I'm forgetting those things that are behind. And I'm reaching for those things that are before. I'm pressing forward to the mark of the high calling through Christ Jesus. I also cover things you can do to pamper yourself. When was the last time you did something to lift your spirits, to pamper yourself? I also cover how to control your thoughts. Are you controlling your thoughts or are your thoughts controlling you? I cover how to overcome negative thinking, how to use your imagination. The imagination is a very powerful tool. And um, I teach you how to use visualization to get the end results that you want. For instance, um, the reason why I started experiencing fear and depression is because I had a traumatic experience in my life. I was in an abusive marriage and um, once, when I left that abusive relationship uh, the abuser was very cruel. He didn't hit me. Uh, he knew that if he hit me, I would leave. But it was mental abuse, which can be worse than physical abuse. It's still abuse. But um, when I left that relationship, because it was traumatic, for a while I used to have nightmares about this person. And I saw him as this big monster. And I used my imagination to shrink my abuser down. And I shrunk him down, shrunk him down, until I shrunk him down to about the size of an ant. And then I caused the, the vision of him to disappear. And so you can use your imagination. Whatever's causing that fear, whatever's causing that dis depression, Use your imagination. Shrink that problem down. Shrink that evil image down. Shrink that evil experience down. And throw it out of your mind. The Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians, I think it's uh, ten, four, and 5. It says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into the captivity of Jesus Christ. 
how do you cast down imaginations? The way you cast down imaginations is when an evil thought comes to your mind, when those thoughts of fear come to your mind, thoughts of discouragement come to your mind, of sadness, you cast those imaginations down by casting them out of your mind. Reject those thoughts. You are in control of what you think about. You're in control of what you focus on. And the more you focus on something, the larger it will become. So don't focus on your enemy. Don't focus on that person who hurts you. Don't focus on that traumatic experience. Instead, when that experience comes to your mind or the thought comes, cast it down, the Bible says. Bring that thought into captivity. You bring it into captivity by praying and you saying, Lord, take this thought from my mind. And he will. Lord, help me cast this thought out of my mind. And refocus your mind on something else. Cast that thought down. Cast it out of your mind. Reject it. Because many times when thoughts come to our mind and they're evil, they're not from us. Those thoughts come from the devil trying to put that, that thought into your mind. So you don't have to think the devil's thoughts. Cast that thought down. Cast it out of your mind. Reject it. Every single time, reject it. You are in control of what you think about. Being, deciding to be depressed is a choice. So you can also decide not to be depressed. It's a choice. So you can choose to be sad or you can choose to be happy. Our emotions are a choice. Someone cannot force us to be angry. We choose to be angry. No one can force you to be fearful. You choose to be angry. You choose to let, accept that thought. But you need to reject the devil's thoughts. In my book, Other Physical Things You Can Do, I talk about the benefits of using uh, high doses of magnesium and the herb St. John's wort. Uh, scientific studies have shown that St. John's wort can help with depression. Another thing that you can do for depression is write a letter to yourself listing your positive qualities and accomplishments. I'm sure that you have accomplished many positive things in your life. So write sort of a love letter, a letter of appreciation to yourself. This will help lift your spirits. Sometimes we've done good things in our life and we have forgotten. So write a letter of encouragement and inspiration to yourself. Next, try not to please everybody. Don't be a yes person. You can't please everybody because while you're trying to please everybody else, you're probably displeasing yourself. In my book, I discuss how to do self-talk, how to do positive self-affirmations. Another thing to overcome depression and fear, learn not to complain. Learn to be thankful and content. Some people are depressed because they're always complaining. They look at the dark clouds of life instead of at the silver lining of life. Focus on the positive. No matter what is going on wrong in your life, there are, I'm sure there are some positive things going on positive. If you were able to get up this morning, if you were able to see the sun shining, if you were able to hear, if you're able to feel, taste, touch, if you're able to walk, if you're able to talk, if you're able to move, you can find something to be thankful about. You know, God hates it when we complain. And I see among the church so many children of God who complain. And we need to understand that God hates it when we complain. Because it shows a spirit of unthankfulness. When we complain, number one, it shows a heart or a spirit of unthankfulness. Number two, it, it's like telling God, God, you don't know what you're doing. And number three, when we complain... We're making the same mistake as ancient Israel. We're modern day Israelites. We're the modern day children of God. And the mistake that they made is that they were always murmuring and complaining. And that's one of the reasons why they had to stay in the wilderness for 40 years. Because of constant murmuring and complaining. And so 
let's not make the same mistake. When you find yourself getting ready to complain, immediately turn your words to say praise the Lord, to find something to thank God about. And I just find so many people complaining. When it's hot, they're talking about, oh, it's hot. But then when it's cold, then they're talking about, oh, it's cold. It's like we're never satisfied. So complaining may be causing depression. So learn to be thankful. As Apostle Paul said, I've learned to be content in whatever situation I'm in. So let's do that. And then I think it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be thankful in all things, for this is the will of God concerning you. So let us learn to be thankful, beloved, in all things. Another way you can overcome depression is by giving. When we give, we get a double blessing. Luke 6.38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Do you know being able to give is a blessing? When we're able to give, it's a blessing to be a blessing. And in giving, there's a double blessing. You're blessed as the giver. And the person who receives from you is also blessed. So there's a double blessing in giving. So to overcome depression, become, become a giver. And as you give joy to others, joy will return to you. In order to overcome fear and depression, get your mind off yourself. Go out and volunteer. Find something to do to help others. And as you go out, and give of yourself to help others. You won't have time to be fearful. You won't have time to think about yourself and be depressed as you go out to be a blessing to others. Join a social group. Get involved and join a social group and, and meet some new friends. Get involved in some kind of sport or activity. Uh, do some things to cause laughter. The Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine. So in my book, I cover several ideas of things you can do to laugh and bring laughter to your heart. Watch uplifting, inspirational Christian movies. If you're watching depressing things on television, that can trigger depression. In my book, I also give a list of things you can do to feed your soul. What are you doing to feed your soul, to lift your spirit? Uh, I suggest things like getting a massage. Another thing you can do is to learn something new. Maybe take a class, uh, learn how to play a musical instrument. Uh, when, if you take a class, this will, to learn something new, this can give you a sense of accomplishment. In order to overcome fear, depression, guilt, you also need to forgive yourself and forgive those who have hurt you. Maybe you're depressed because someone hurt you deeply. But you need to forgive that person. The Bible says if we do not forgive, God will not forgive us. Some people are depressed and have emotional illness because they have resentment in their heart. They have unforgiveness in their hearts. And they need to let go of their enemies. They need to let go of the past and move on. If we have resentment and unforgiveness in our hearts, this can give the devil a stronghold in our mind. This can give the devil a foothold and give him the legal right to cause fear and depression. So forgive. Forgiveness sets you free from the person who wronged you. Forgiveness sets you free from the negative experience of pain, disappointment, guilt, and shame. Forgiveness opens your heart and frees you to experience love, joy, and peace of mind. You must forgive and you must confess and ask God to forgive you. The Bible says in 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, if we confess our sins, turn from our sins, God will forgive us. This is a promise, beloved. God will forgive us. 
So if God forgives us, who are we not to forgive ourselves? I've heard some people say, but I can't forgive myself. Well, if God can forgive us, who are we not to forgive ourselves? If you say you can't forgive yourself, you're putting yourself in the place of God. So forgive yourself. Let God forgive you and forgive the person who has, who has hurt you. Now I want to turn to some spiritual things you can do. You can try drugs and drugs have helped people. You can try counseling and drugs, are, counseling is very helpful. But like I said, ultimately what cured me of fear, depression, emotional issues and of the tra traumatic experience that I had was God. God is the answer to all our questionings. He's the answer to every problem in life. Only He can give us real joy, real peace of mind. Only God can remove fear and depression from our minds. He is the great physician. In order to overcome fear, we need to realize that fear comes from the devil. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So if you have fear, that spirit of fear is not coming from God. It's coming from another spirit. And so it is the devil that causes fear and discouragement. The devil tries to use fear to keep people in bondage. Satan's weapons come in the form of fear. Depression, doubt, anxiety, panic attacks, stress, discouragement, restlessness, and guilt. God has also not given us the spirit of depression. God gives us joy, peace of mind, hope. And so this spirit of depression that may be tormenting you, harassing you, may be coming from another spirit. Some people are suffering from these issues because they have somehow allowed the devil to get access to their mind. Do you know that you can do certain things in your life that can give Satan legal rights to you? That can give the devil and his demons legal right to cause fear, to cause depression, to harass you with anxiety and stress and emotional issues and panic attacks. So you may be asking, how does the devil gain access to our mind? Well, we must be very careful because there are many ways that the devil can gain access to the mind. He can gain access by if we get involved in the occult, witchcraft, or spiritualism. We can get involved in these things by going to see a psychic or a palm reader, or by reading the zodiac and horoscope, or by reading books and and watching movies that glorify witchcraft and wizards and if you've noticed the devil has a lot of movies coming out on television and uh, in the theater that promotes witchcraft and teaching children uh, that it's exciting to be a witch and cast spells and be a wizard but these things are of the devil the Bible teaches that these things are satanic and God doesn't approve of them that they're evil. And so we need to leave the dark side alone. The devil can also gain access by watching soap operas. I have uh, encountered many people who watch soap operas and they are dealing with spiritual warfare. Do you know when you watch soap operas on TV, soap operas contain nothing but sex, violence, lies, adultery, fornication, sin, and promote vice lies and so when you watch these programs you're opening your home you're opening your mind for the influence of demon demons demonic influence and so we have to be very careful what we watch David said in the Bible I will set no evil thing before my eyes the Bible says by beholding we become changed into the same image so if you're watching these things whether you know it or not they are influencing you the Bible says, do not give place to the devil. So if you're watching evil programs, you're giving place in your home for demons to come in.
to harass you, to harass your mind with fear and depression. So be careful what you behold with your eyes. If you lose your temper, the devil can gain control. If you lose your temper, temper, when you lose your temper, the devil can take control of your temper. The devil can gain access to your mind by saying that you refuse to give up. Is there a sin in your life that you won't let go of, that you refuse to give up? If you are living in disobedience to God by virtue of you being default in obeying God and you keep holding on to a sin, by, that, by doing that, refusing to give up that sin, you're giving the devil permission to have legal right to torment you with fear or depression. The devil can gain access to your mind by an unconverted spouse. If you become unequally yoked with an unbeliever, the Bible says when two people get married, or even when two people have sex, they become one flesh. And so if you're having sex with an unbeliever, or you become unequally yoked with an unbeliever, by becoming one flesh with that person, you're establishing ungodly soul tie that can give the devil legal right to come and harass you with fear or depression or guilt. The devil can gain access to the mind by the study of false science. By disobeying your parents. Uh, by being free from restraint. If you have a child that has a tendency to have temper tantrums, that's not the spirit of Christ. That's another spirit. And so when you have a child that's having a temper tantrum, you need to pray for that child. Because your child doesn't know how to control their spirit. They don't know how to yield to be under the control of the Holy Spirit. And if you're not controlling your child, guess who will come in and control? Satan will come in and control. So if your child is out of control, you need to pray for your child. Don't yell at your child. The devil is not the child is not the, the enemy. The devil is the enemy controlling that child. So you need to lay hands on your child and pray, rebuke and bind that evil spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And ask the Holy Spirit to take control of your child. If you have a temper, rebuke and bind that spirit that caused you to be irritable or impatient. In the name of Jesus Christ, rebuke and bind that spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to control your spirit so that he can help you to have a right spirit. So the devil can gain access to your mind by disobeying your parents. The devil can uh, gain access to your mind by not making a complete surrender to Jesus Christ. If you're wavering, I meet so many Christians, they want to be Christians but they still want to hold on to the world. You can't serve two masters, beloved. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. You'll love one and hate the other. You have to decide. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. But if you're wavering, if you're double-minded, and you haven't completely surrendered totally to God, the devil can gain access. If you're carelessly indifferent toward God, carelessly indifferent toward obeying spiritual things, carelessly indifferent to doing what you know is right, the devil can gain access to your mind by listening to wrong music, worldly music. Some rock music is satanic. Some, some of these guys that have these bands, these rock bands, they have admitted that they worship the devil. So if you're listening to their rock music, by that music, the devil can gain access. By idleness. The Bible says idleness is the devil's workshop. By forbidden marriages. By not obeying Bible teachings. By rejecting the truth, rejecting Bible truth, by perverted and indulged appetite, by yielding to the thoughts that the devil tries to put in your mind. If you yield to his suggestions and take his thoughts as your own, he can gain access. And like I said, by wrong diet. Therefore, avoid the indulgence of appetite. Avoid perverted appetite. Your body is the temple of God. So don't treat your body like a shack. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do you realize that? 
Some people don't even know that eating and even our drinking is a spiritual issue. We are even supposed to eat and drink to the glory of God. So, spiritually, if we're children of God, we should not be eating junk food because you cannot eat junk food to the glory of God. You can't drink sodas to the glory of God because sodas have caffeine in them, which is a drug. Lots of sugar. Sugar is a drug. And so, be very careful. Avoid junk food. Avoid too much sugar because your diet affects your mind. What you put into your body affects your mind and can trigger depression. Avoid nicotine. Avoid caffeine. Sugar and caffeine can wreak havoc on your nervous system and on your brain and cause uh, stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. I want to read this quote about sugar. It's called 59 reasons your no, 59 reasons why sugar ruins your health. It's by Nancy Appleton, author of Lick the Sugar Habit. She says sugar suppresses the immune system. Sugar upsets the minerals in the body. Sugar causes hyperactivity. That's why a lot of children are hyper. They don't need Ritalin. What they need is to get off all this sugar. Sugar causes hyperactivity, anxiety, difficulty concentrating, crankiness in children. Sugar leads to chromium deficiency. Sugar causes copper deficiency. Sugar can cause asthma. Sugar can cause arthritis. Sugar can cause tooth decay. Sugar can cause aging. Sugar can cause migraine headaches. And so sugar can wreak havoc on the body. So limit your sugar intake. When I cook, I try not to use sugar. I try to use honey or maple syrup or stevia, something like that, instead of sugar. So now, how can Christ have control of our mind? Because we don't want the devil to have access. We want Christ to have control of our minds. When our minds are under the control of Christ, Christ will give us peace of mind. Christ will take away the depression. Christ will take away the fear. We can invite Christ to control us in our mind, in our body, by yielding to him in obedience. And the opposite is true. We can invite the devil to control our mind and body by yielding to him in, dis in disobedience to God. Every morning, give your will to God. Rededicate your mind and body to God. Give your will to God so that he can control you. What is the will? The will is our power of decision and choice. When you make a decision, when you make a choice to do something, you're using your will. So give your will to God. Christ so he can be in control of your mind and body. Here's a quote from a book called Mount of Blessings by E.G. White, page 62. It says, when we give our will to be under the control of Christ, he does not take it away from us or destroys it. He purifies it and gives it back to us to use in service for him. Our will is to be yielded to Christ that we may receive it again, purified and refined, so he can pour through us his love and power. So say to Satan, Satan, I'm taking my will from you, and I'm giving it to Christ. We must decidedly choose Christ to be our master each day. Otherwise, if we reject Christ and continue to live in sin, we are choosing Satan to be our master. Give your will to God so that he can work and will in you to do of his good pleasure. Because if you do not give your will to be under the control of God, Satan will take your will and he will work in will to do in you of his evil pleasure. God accepts nothing less than our absolute surrender of the mind, heart, and will and the entire being to his control. Daily, you must learn the meaning of self-surrender. Please view my other video about how to know if you've been truly born again. 
and it also covers how to have victory over sin, how to surrender yourself and your will to be under the control of the Holy Spirit so that he can keep you from sinning and so that the Holy Spirit could be in control of you to help you have a right spirit. Make sure you watch my other message also. Because so many people think they're born again, but they're not. All they've done is prayed the sinner's prayer, and maybe they've even been baptized, but they haven't changed. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5, 17, that when we come to Christ, we're a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are become new. And so, but so many people, they, they join the church, but they haven't joined Christ. And they say they're born again, and they're still talking like they used to do. Their language hasn't changed. Their behavior hasn't changed. They still have the same evil sins they had before, the same bad habits. And um, there's no change. But to be born again and converted means to be changed. And so, um, I hope that you'll listen to that message. And it also covers victory over sin and how to be under the control of the Holy Spirit. How to have Christ abiding in you. What it means to have Christ abiding in us. And how when he is abiding, he can give us victory over sin. If you do not cooperate with the heavenly angels, Satan will take possession of your mind. The only defense against the devil and his demons is the indwelling of Christ's Holy Spirit within our hearts by faith in his righteousness. Now I want to give you the spiritual weapons of our warfare. If you're dealing with spiritual warfare, and a lot of people are dealing with spiritual warfare, you see Satan knows his time is short. But our time is short too. And we don't have time to be playing with sin, compromising with the devil. Probation is going to close. If we think we're just going to keep on sinning and repenting right up until the time Christ comes, oh no, there's going to come a time when probation will close. That's why we must get the victory over these sins now. The Bible says in um, Revelation chapter 22, verse 11, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. For behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. So, beloved, probation is going to close. When Jesus comes, if we're filthy, we're going to be filthy for eternity. If we're righteous, we'll be righteous for eternity. So we better get righteous now. We better get holy now before probation closes. Because when probation closes, it'll be too late for us to get it together and repent and turn from our sins. Now, in these probationary hours, we need to repent and turn from our sins. Okay, so here are the spiritual weapons of our warfare. If you're dealing with spiritual warfare and demonic spirits are tormenting you or the devil is bothering you, uh, these are spiritual weapons you can use to overcome fear, depression, guilt, emotional issues, and um, the powers of darkness. Number one, as I said, you must forgive and ask God for forgiveness. Number two, confess and forsake your sins. Repent. Repentance means to be sorry for your sins, but also to be sorry enough to quit. Some people who say, after they sin, they say, oh God, I'm sorry, forgive me then they go commit the same sin. That's not true repentance. That's worldly repentance. And so we must sincerely repent. Proverbs 28, 13 says, Confess your sins and forsake them. He who confesses his sins and forsake them shall have mercy. So we can't just confess our sins. We have to confess them and forsake our sins. Why? Because sin gives the devil legal rights to harass us with fear and torment us with depression. Jeremiah 5.25 says, Sin can withhold good from you. If you're not being blessed like you want to be blessed, maybe it's because your sins are withholding good from you. I know I used to smoke, and God convicted me that I needed to stop smoking. Because even though God loves me, 
He can't, he can't save me in sin. And smoking is a sin. God wants to transform us from sinners into saints. No sin can enter heaven. If sin and sinners could enter heaven, then Jesus wouldn't have had to come and die to pay the penalty for our sins. And so God convicted me that my body is the temple of God. And every time I was smoking, I was hurting God because God created me. When we smoke, it's like saying, well, God, you gave me my health, but I don't want it. And so let us stop hurting God by hurting our body with smoking. There's no cigarette machines in heaven. And so I had to stop smoking. So search your heart. Examine your life. Is there a sin in your life that is giving the devil and his demonic spirits influence in your life? That is giving them legal right to torment you with fear or depression. Are you tithing? Malachi 3 verses 8 to 10 says, Will a man rob God? And it talks about if we don't pay our tithe, if we don't give 10% of our income to God that we owe him, we're robbing God. So pay your tithe. Uh, do you use profanity? Do you use bad words? Some people using bad words has become so normal to them, they think that's the norm. But it's a sin. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So if you're using bad words, repent. Ask God to give you victory over that. 1 Corinthians. Read 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 and 17. And 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, where it says, Our body is the temple of God. So are you abusing your body by eating junk food, by wrong eating, by indulged appetite? The Bible says we will reap what we sow. And so some people may have a chemical imbalance in their brain that's causing the depression because of wrong appetite. And so... Um, And, and the Bible says that if we, God says that if we destroy our bodies, he will destroy us. And many people are probably sick due to their, the, hurting their bodies, abusing their bodies with wrong appetite. And so God has allowed sickness to come upon them. So examine your life and, and ask God, Lord, what sin is in my life that may be giving the devil legal right to me? Uh, is it gossip? Many people gossip. Talking about other people behind their back instead of going to the person. So, are you obeying God's commandments? Revelation 22 verse 14 says that only those who enter heaven are those who keep God's commandments. And so, uh, beloved, these are things we need to consider. Another reason we need to overcome sin so that we don't give the devil right to us is that first uh, Isaiah 59 2 says sin separates us from God I don't want anything to separate me from God so if we have sin in our lives we're separating ourselves from God if we're separating ourselves from God we're giving the devil permission to come in and connect himself to us the Bible tells us in John 8, 11, Jesus told the woman who was caught in adultery, go and sin no more. When this woman who was caught in adultery was brought to Jesus, he told her, go and sin no more. He didn't say, go and cut back on sinning. We must go and sin no more. These are the very last days. We don't have any time to be playing with sin. We need to get the victory. Number three, ask God to take control of your mind and body. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So you need to be born again. You need to get the spiritual mind of Christ because the spiritual mind of Christ doesn't have fear. It doesn't have depression. Number four, when the devil tries to put evil thoughts into your mind, of fear or depression. Reject those thoughts. You see, temptation is not sin. Temptation is only the possibility to sin. So when an evil thought comes to your mind, having an evil thought is not sin. 
If you dwell on that thought, lust after that thought, indulge that thought, then that thought will become sin. Then it becomes you sitting in your mind. Next, pray. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fight your spiritual battles for you. When we pray, the devil trembles. If you neglect prayer, you will be overcome by the devil. Prayer is a powerful spiritual weapon. Prayer is you talking to God like a friend. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but prayer brings us up. It lifts us up to a spiritual atmosphere of heaven. It lifts us up to God. In my book, I have a section a whole section on prayer and how the power of prayer, how to have a successful and effective prayer life. The closer you draw to God in prayer, the further the devil and his demons will flee from you. What I do to get closer to God and to drive demonic spirits from me is I take prayer walks. Jesus connected to God in nature. He went up in the mountains and the hills and solitude and got away from the distractions to pray. And that's what I do. To get away from all the distractions around me, I take a prayer walk. I find a, either I go in the yard or find a nice park and I just commune with God in nature. I start singing hymns and I just start praising God for the beautiful blue sky and the trees and the flowers and the animals and I start by praising God and I take a prayer walk. And before I know it, no fear, no depression, no sadness, nothing but joy. And the um, Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. So if you're praising God, there's no room for fear or depression. Spend quality time getting to know God. Because to know him is to love him. And as you get closer to him, you'll fall in love with him. And you won't want to sin. You won't want to hurt God by saying. So get out in nature. Get away from the distractions all around you. Devil ha the devil has all these distractions. It's like he said to his demons, let us invent the radio. And if I can't get them all with radio, television. Then invent the computer and the cell phone and the iPod and the iPad and all these things. And we think they're conveniences. They're not conveniences. They're just distractions of the devil. To keep us from prayer and spending quality time reading the Bible the Holy Word of God. So get away from all these distractions because soon we will have to stand in the great day of the Lord and millions will be found unprepared because they have not taken this time to spend quality time getting to know God. If you don't take time getting to know God, how will you know His will? Next. In order to drive demonic spirits away and overcome depression and the evil spirit of fear and depression, praise God. When you find depression or fear trying to cloud your mind, start praising God. Because this gives joy to your heart. It will drive demonic spirits away from you. It will cause those evil spirits to flee. Also, sing sacred hymns. This will lift your spirits and this will drive the devil and his demonic spirits away. I got a hymn book, and, and sometimes I just start singing hymns when I'm evil spirits try to bother me with depression or sadness. I just start singing hymns. The devil and his demons, they can't stand it when you start singing praises to God. Singing is a powerful spiritual weapon of our warfare that we can use to drive away the powers of darkness and to drive away the dark clouds of fear and depression from us. Damn. Next. Hello? If you're dealing with insomnia and you can't sleep, get a tape player or a CD player and listen to the Holy Bible especially at night if you can't sleep. Listen to the Holy Bible and it will help you go to sleep. Next, in order to overcome fear and depression, read the Holy Bible out loud. If you're dealing with spiritual warfare, if you're dealing with fear, if you're dealing with depression, get your Holy Bible. This is called the sword. 
because it cuts like a knife. And when you start reading the Holy Bible, especially the book of Psalms, it will run those evil spirits of fear and depression away. Next, the next thing you can do, memorize God's precious promises so that when you're being disturbed, you can claim his promise, you can speak his promises, his precious promises out loud. When the spirit of fear comes, say out loud, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Memorize God's precious promises. Use the word of God, your sword, because the word of God has power. Next, in order to overcome fear and depression and spiritual warfare, rebuke, rebuke and bind those evil spirits. Say, I rebuke and bind you, spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you, spirit of discouragement, spirit of failure, spirit of poverty, spirit of infirmity. I rebuke you, unclean spirit, evil spirit. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the name above every other name. So rebuke and bind those spirits in the name of Jesus Christ and render those evil spirits ineffective in your life. See, in the name of Jesus Christ, I render you evil spirit ineffective, useless in my life. Next, there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Plead the merits of the blood of Jesus Christ over your mind and body. Plead, ask God to appropriate the merits of the blood of Jesus Christ over your mind, over your body, over your life, over your children, over your home. Ask God to plead the merits of the blood of Jesus Christ. Another thing you can do if you're dealing with depression, separate yourself from negative people. Sometimes negative people can cause you to feel depressed. Another thing you, you must do is make sure that you are born again and you have an intimate, intimate, personal, close relationship with God. And as you remain vitally connected to God, He will give you a spirit of peace and keep away those wrong spirits. Next, have faith in God. Hebrews 11.6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is reward of them that diligently seek him. In order to have faith, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. So in order to increase your faith, so that you won't have fear, you won't have depression, you need to get sermon messages and listen to them. Instead of watching television, unless you're watching Christian programs to fortify your faith, get some DVDs of sermon messages. Get some... Christian CDs and listen to Christian music and this will fortify your faith as you listen to the word it will build your faith in closing I just have a few more points I'm running out of time so I don't have time to cover how to overcome guilt but if you do some of the things I've mentioned this will also help you to overcome guilt or any kind of emotional issue that you're dealing with even bipolar but in my book, I cover also things you can do to build your faith, things you can do to be vitally connected to God, to improve your prayer life, things you can do to overcome guilt. And um, lastly, I want to say, you can know if you have been born again. The Bible says, by their fruits you should know them. Just because you prayed the, sinner, the sinner's prayer and accepted Christ, does not mean that you have been born again. Just because you've been baptized doesn't mean you've been born again. The Bible says, by their fruits you should know them. By, the fruits mean by their character traits you shall know if a person has been born again. Examine your character traits. Examine your fruits. Don't examine yourself by your good works. Some people think, oh, I'm a good person. I've been born again because I do good works. But an unbeliever can do good works. Examine yourself by your fruits, your character traits. And Galatians 5, 22 and 23 gives us those character traits, those fruits. Listen very carefully. I'm almost finished. 
It says, by the fruits of the Holy Spirit is, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So, examine yourself. When you're dealing with people, when you're dealing with difficult circumstances, or any kind of circumstances. What methods do you use in dealing with people? The methods, if you use, if you're born again, you will use Christ's methods, which are the fruits of the Spirit. You will deal with people and circumstances using love, charity, goodness, gentleness, meekness, humility, long-suffering, patience, self-control, thankfulness, Honesty, truthfulness, brotherly kindness, godliness, virtue, faith. Seriously, think about it. But when you deal with people and circumstances, an indication that you may not be born again is if sometimes when you deal with people or circumstances, you deal using the devil's methods. What are the devil's methods? Fear, unbelief, lack of faith, doubt. Hate, jealousy, resentment, dishonesty, compromise, pride, stubbornness, rudeness, emotionalism, wrong appetite, impatience, irritability, temper, lying, evil surmising, thoughts of revenge, unforgiveness, fretfulness, complaining, selfishness, worldliness, envy. So how do you deal with people? Examine your spirit. Test your spirit. Don't test yourself by your works. Test yourself by your spirit. What spirit is controlling you day to day, moment by moment, when you're dealing with people, when you're dealing with your family members, your spouse, when you're dealing with difficult people and circumstances and problems? What spirit are you using? Are you teachable or are you a know-it-all? Are you calm in dealing with people and circumstances or emotional? And let me give you these two last Bible quotes. We must be meek. We must be like Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 1 says, Jesus was meek and gentle. Are you meek and gentle, beloved? Or harsh and rude? Jesus is coming soon. He says he's coming for a peculiar and holy people like unto himself. 1 John 3, 2 says that when Jesus comes, we will behold him. And we will be like him. And we will see him as he is. Ask yourself, beloved. Are you like Christ? We must be like him. Not like the world. But we must be like Christ. A Christian means to be like Christ. But so many who call themselves Christians are not like Christ. Lastly, I want to tell you that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we ask or think. God is able to deliver you from fear or depression or anything else. The only thing that would hope with stops him is our lack of faith. So believe and be free in Jesus. God bless. This is Ruth Henderson and please stay tuned for my free book offer, free CD offer. I want to thank you so much for tuning into the program today and I hope that the things you heard have been a blessing to you. That's the whole purpose of my ministry, Amazing Truth Ministry, and that is to be a blessing. I want to share with you some information about the free offers that I have, the free book, free DVD and CD offers that I have for you today. Um, when you order my book on depression, now I have upgraded this book and I have a new version and it's called The Way to Be Happy, 45 Key Ways That I Know to Overcome Fear, Depression, and Guilt. And in that book, I share how to have a happy life, a victorious life, how to control your thoughts. Are your thoughts running away? 
Is the devil putting negative thoughts in your head? Well, this book will show you how to control your thoughts. It goes into great detail and how to overcome negative thinking. It also addresses uh, how to overcome a quick temper. And um, I also cover how to overcome sin in your life. And so if you get this book or this book, my other book, Defeat the Powers of Darkness with Spiritual Warfare. A lot of people are also dealing with um, spiritual warfare. So in this book, it, it says know your spiritual weapons and learn how to use them effectively. So in this book, I give what the spiritual weapons are, how to use them. I share my testimony on how to defeat the powers of darkness, uh, how to control your thoughts, how to have the new birth experience and victory over sin, and uh, how to cast out demonic spirits. It also includes inspirational poetry. So if you get either one of these books, I have a free offer. With these books, I will send you my poetry concert, one of my poetry concerts. Uh, I'm trying to let God use me to restore his gift of poetry. Uh, as you can see, my t-shirt says, poetry is making a comeback. And if you go to my website, it lists my books. My website is www.ruthhenderson.co. That's Ruth. Henderson, H-E-N-D-E-R-S-O-N dot C-O. And it will list my books uh, and the free book that I offer here. And my other website will tell you more about the poetry concerts, how I'm trying to, um, each month, give a poetry concert. I'm trying to get other Christian poets to share their poetry. Uh, even though poetry is biblical, it's rare that you hear poetry in churches anymore. And that shouldn't be the case. The Bible says, I think it's James 1.17, every good and perfect gift comes from God above. So God wants us to use all of his gifts, including poetry. God can speak through a poem just as well as he can speak through a sermon or a song. And so about seven years ago, I was homeless and I asked God, I said, God, what do you want me to do with my life? And he spoke to my heart and he said, I gave you the gift of poetry when you were 16. And I want you to help restore my gift of poetry again. And so right after that, I started, started seeking God in prayer, taking prayer walks. And during some of these prayer walks, God started giving me these poems. And each poem seemed to have a divine message. For instance, he gave me a poem called, Why Not Tell Somebody? And it's about the importance of God wants his people to start witnessing and sharing their faith in these last days. He gave me another poem called, Much Prayer Means Much Power. And in that poem, God is telling us that he wants us to start becoming a people of prayer in these last days. Because that prayer is the only thing that's going to get us through, being people of fervent, diligent prayer. He also gave me a poem uh, called, When America Remembers How to Pray. And it talks about how America has gone into idolatry. You know, instead of people idolizing God, people are idolizing material things, their homes and their cars and their jobs and clothes and things like that. And so God wants us to return back to our roots and become a Christian nation again. And um, he also gave me a poem uh, called Stop Complaining. And in that poem, God shares his will about he wants his people to stop complaining, and he wants us to become a people who are thankful. So each one of the poems that he has given me seems to have a divine message that God wants me to deliver in these last days. So if you want to find out more about my poetry concerts, how you can share your poetry, or how you can uh, even give a donation to help sponsor one of my poetry concerts, you can go to my other website, which is www.gift, G-I-F-T, Gift of Poetry, no, that's not it, that's my email address. My email address is giftofpoetry1004 at gmail.com. My other website dealing with the poetry concerts is www.greatamericanpoetshow.org. 
That's greatamericanpoetshow.org. And you can submit your poetry or give a donation. Now, as I was saying, if you get this book or this book, I will send you um, a part of my poetry concert on DVD. I will also send you this amazing fact study guide. It makes it very clear on what happens when a person dies. There's a lot of confusion about that, but this makes it clear. I will also send you absolutely free this study guide on health. Uh, the information in here helped me stop smoking in one day. 20 years ago, I stopped smoking. From the information in here, I was able to stop smoking in one day. It also covers how to have good health and proper diet. So if you're dealing with health issues, you need to get the study guide. I'll also send you absolutely free this study guide on the coming of Christ. There's a lot of confusion, and we need to understand the true method Jesus will return. So if you get this book or this book on spiritual warfare depression, I'll send you these three study guides for free my poetry DVD, and I'll also send you this book entitled, my newest book, called How to Break Curses Over Your Life. A lot of people are dealing with emotional issues, financial issues, uh, illnesses in their family because it might be a curse over their family. So this book is called How to Break Curses Over Your Life and Generational Curses Over Your Family's Life. I also talk about how to break ungodly soul ties and also how to keep the devil and demons away from you. So I will send you all these items absolutely free. Now my next book, uh, it used to be called Confessions of a Modern Day Evangelist, but I changed the name and it's called The Book Lady. And so the new version is called The Book Lady. Because I do a lot of literature evangelism, a lot of people started calling me The Book Lady. So this is my testimony. And I share true stories about my exciting experience. Um, the good experiences as well as the dangerous experiences that I've had as a modern day disciple for Christ. So if you like true stories that are exciting, uh, then you can get my book here. I also learn, uh, I mean, share my testimony about how I became born again. And how I'm now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, living a victorious Christian life. And with this book, if you get any of my other books, I will also send you my poetry CD. And I will send you this book that explains who the Antichrist is. It explains Revelation. A lot of people are trying to understand the prophecies of Revelation and Daniel. Well, this book explains Revelation and Daniel very clearly. So if you get any of the, my other books here, I will send you this book absolutely free, and I will send you my poetry CD of my concert for free. Uh, my next book that I offer is called Incredible Modern Day Miracles. And in this book, uh, it's true stories about God's miracle working power in my life over the past 20 years. Many of the mir miracles that he has performed in my life. It's a compilation of short stories and uh, very inspirational. God still performs miracles and uh, he can still part the Red Sea. And so if you get this book, um, I will send you uh, my poetry CD and also the book, revealing and exposing who the Antichrist is and also this book exposes what the mark of the beast is and so and then my next book is my poetry book it's called good news in a bad news world and let's face it in the times we're living in we all could use some good news every time you turn on the news all you hear is bad news but this book is full just completely full of inspirational poems uh, poems that will change your life so if you need an uplifting word, a word of encouragement, a word of hope, then I recommend my poetry book, Good News in a Bad News World. And if you get that book, I'll send you the book Exposing the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast, and I'll send you my poetry concert. And the last book that I'm offering here is Total Victory Over Sin. And in this book, I explain many hard-to-understand principles in the Bible, such as what does it mean to have the mind of Christ? What does the Bible mean when it says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. How do we get the spiritual mind of Christ? Uh, it explains, what does it mean to die daily? When Paul said, I, I die daily to my old sin nature, and I'm born again. This book explains that. It explains how to resist temptation. It explains um, how to understand righteousness by faith. 
it explains the science of salvation and victory over sin. So if you get any of these of my other books, and you can get them at my website, ruthhenderson.co. You can also get these books on Amazon.com. But if you get my books through Amazon.com, you don't get the free offer. But if you purchase the book through my website, my own website, then you get the free offers. Now this last free offer is my CD. This CD is entitled Cures for Cancer and Other Illnesses. It's $14.95. And you can send $14.95, it comes with free shipping, to my P.O. Box, P.O. Box 1292, Savannah, Tennessee, 38372. That's P.O. Box 1292, Savannah, Tennessee, 38372. My P.O. Box, my address is on my website. But if you get this, uh, send $14.95, it's free shipping, to my P.O. Box, I will send you. This actually has a cure for cancer on it that a man used to get a cure of cancer. So that alone makes it priceless. If you get this CD, I will send you for free my other CD, on depression. Some people don't like to read books. So I have this CD that is entitled Be Happy and Overcome Depression Now. So if you get pay for this CD, $14.95, I'll send you this other CD, uh, which is also valued at $14.95 for free. And it covers um, 15 ways to defeat depression, how to control your thoughts and negative thinking, and how to have a successful prayer life. So when you get the Cancer Cure CD, I will send you the Depression CD for free, and I'll send you this CD for free, my other CD, which is called How to Have a Happy Marriage. A lot of people dealing with marital problems. The devil hates marriage, and so he's been attacking marriage. So you'll also get this one hour. It's a seminar on how to have a happy marriage. It offers 10 key ingredients to having a happy and successful marriage. And it also offers 10 ways to spice up your marriage. You'll make a perfect gift for someone you know who, are, who is getting ready to get married. Or someone celebrating their anniversary. Or someone who just wants to improve on a good marriage. So here's a CD that you also get for free. And lastly, when you order my Cancer Cure CD, you get those two CDs I just mentioned for free. And I'll also send you this free book. Steps to Christ. Don't let the small size fool you. I had been in the church all my life, and it wasn't until I read this book, Steps to Christ, How to Know Him Better, that I got to know God intimately and personally. It's a powerful book, and you'll love it. You will love it. Well, that about covers it, and um, I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and may God be with you.